from Maui Health, and we want to say good morning to Dr. Lee Weiss, who is the Regional Director of Emergency Medical Services for EMA. Good morning, Dr. Weiss. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing fine, and uh, how are you? Thank you. I'm really well. Uh, I'm very, very excited and really a pleasure to be with you, and welcome to all of your listeners uh, from Maui and the Outer Islands. Uh, I hope you're all healthy and uh, you all have my uh, uh, admiration and best wishes. Well, we thank you, uh, Dr. Lee, for all of your help, especially with answering the many questions that we've been getting uh, via our website. All right, let's get right into it. Dennis from Waiehu asks us, uh, Lee, when traveling with others, three or more in our vehicle, does it make a difference if our vehicle windows are open or closed? Well, nobody knows the answer to this definitively, but let's just chat a little bit about what we know about COVID-19 and the way it's transmitted. Okay. This is a droplet transmission, meaning it's through the air in vapor droplets that happen as a consequence of breathing and talking. Um, If you're driving in a car in a congested area with your window down and you pass either another car or a group of people standing by then at least it's possible that the virus could be transmitted by vapor clouds that are created by people who are speaking, talking, or breathing. Um, If you're out in the country or you're on uh, a more rural road, uh, certainly some of the roads uh, uh, in and around Maui, uh, with very sparse uh, number of people and not congregating people like in a a shopping mall or things like that, Um, then I don't think it actually makes a difference. If it were me, my advice would keep the windows up, uh, use the car's ventilation system. There is a bit of filtration through that. You won't be hit by vapor clouds, and it won't be a a concern. It's a momentary inconvenience in our lives, uh, but it uh, probably pays off uh, uh, several folds uh, by not contracting the virus. You know, Lee, I've, I've uh, heard some people make statements uh, about the lasting of the virus in uh, the airborne state. Is it a true that it's like about 12 feet? Um, it depends on how it's transmitted. Ah. So by vapor from <clears throat> either a cough mm-hmm. or from even just speaking, six to 10 feet is pretty regular. And oh. that's where that concept of social distancing where there were six feet or so Mm -hmm. uh, between us. Okay. Um, However, a sneeze, Mm. uh, uh, a a paroxysm of several episodes of coughing could cause that vapor to travel up to 25 feet. Got it. So it really depends on the setting. Mm -hmm. The safest thing for me to say is social distancing in general is six to 10 feet regardless of where you are. If you're online at the supermarket, six to 10 feet. If you're shopping in the store in the supermarket, always maintain a barrier of six to 10 feet. And uh, we'll call that what what I refer to as the zone of security. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We want to thank all of our, you know, stores and places of uh, uh, essential gathering, I should say. Um, They are really abiding by the six to 10 feet rule. All of our stores have the tape on the ground and, you know, they're really trying to abide. So we encourage our listeners and all of our people of Maui uh, to uh, do the same. All right. Next question, uh, Dr. Weiss from Patrick and Kihei. When is the state getting the test kits from uh, Abbott Labs? Well, I wish I could give you a lot of hope. Mm -hmm. I have some. The test kit by Abbott is the rapid antigen test. Remember, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this, two different kinds of tests now. One, a test with a nasal swab to determine whether you have the virus. Um, That's the Abbott test, the rapid test. Positive tests in 5 to 15 minutes. Rapid turnaround time while the patient being tested is with you. That test now is being made by Abbott at a rate of about 500,000 tests a week. Wow. They cannot keep up with the demand. Uh, I spoke with uh, Dr. Anderson, uh, the head of the Department of Health, last week, 
I spoke to him specifically about the Abbott test, and he gave me some good news that the state had already gotten a preliminary number of test kits from Abbott and that he was including Maui in a distribution. The initial just distribution would be enough to test about 100 people. That sounds like a drop in the bucket, and it is. Mm-hmm. But the good news is it's starting, yeah. and we will be getting more and more of those tests. And there will be other vendors that make that test. But to be clear... That test only tells you about people who are in the midst of an infection. It doesn't tell you who has already been infected Mm. and now is disease-free and has an antibody. Ah. That's the antibody test. The antibody tests are also going to be relatively quick turnaround times. They identify a group of people who no longer have the virus but are immune to the virus in theory because Mm. they've already had it. That's important to know as we start to think about getting ready to go back to normal life. While that's not going to be any time soon, Mm -hmm. and I leave that decision to our great public health people like Dr. Peng and our great mayor, uh, Mr. Victorino, I would tell you that knowing how many people have an antibody to COVID-19 will become increasingly important. And those test kits, will become very, very important to determine when we're ready to go back to normalcy. Mm. Um, And so two different tests we talked about today, the Abbott Rapid Antigen Test, nasal swab, coming. We're just about ready to get our first kit. Unfortunately, not with a lot of capability to test a lot of people, but it's the beginning. And then the hope uh, of the next generation of tests that look at antibodies and help us identify people who never had symptoms but are immune. Mm, that's very important. The The other spectrum of the whole field, right? That's correct. Mm. Absolutely correct. Wow, interesting. All right. Hey, thank you, uh, Dr. Lee, for that one. Here's our final one, which is kind of lengthy, so uh, bear with me on this. And this one comes from Rebecca sure. from Kula. Uh, The medical community has been distributing estimates that the false negative rate for the COVID-19 testing is around 30%. Uh, She goes on to say some other facts, but uh, the heart of the question is, with that in mind, are you aware of any local labs or the State of Hawaii Department of Health laboratory working on obtaining the ability to do, and I don't know what this means, IgM and IgG antibody testing? Is that what you just explained to us, Dr. Lee? Yes. So let me let me speak to that so that okay. people understand what the holdup there is. Okay. There are there are roughly seven thousand coronaviruses known to man. Mm. All of them have certain attributes in common. When you develop an antibody, you want the antibody not to be against coronavirus. You want the antibody to be against the specific coronavirus Mm. called COVID-19. The IgM antibody is the body's initial response to the infection. As time goes on, the body becomes even more efficient at making antibody and makes a different antibody called IgG. The IgG we want to measure has to be very specific, greater than 95%, and very sensitive, greater than 95%. So sensitivity, the ability to detect the antibody, and specificity, the ability to detect the specific antibody, are key. Mm. There are about five or six tests that are now FDA approved. Again, it's a supply issue. Mm -hmm. They're cranking these test kits out as quickly as they can. The state of Hawaii is also doing the same. I suspect we will see antibody testing in Hawaii within the next week to 10 days, if not sooner. Awesome. That's uh, some good news. And, you know, Dr. Lee, it's always uh, great talking with you. Some great information this morning. And, uh, you know, let's just uh, take this time to encourage um, our listeners and uh, because there's a lot going on. And uh, like we uh, discussed off air, there's a lot of panic going on, too. I would. I can tell you that I I have my own fears. Mm-hmm. Me too. Uh, as does everybody else. 
but we're Maui strong. Yes, sir. And I just want to tell the listeners this. I stand with you. My concern is for the people. I want good outcomes. And I want people to know that the entire emergency department stands with me. The entire Maui health community stands with me. And our unabiding uh, want and desire to help the citizens of Maui, if not everywhere, by making a place for them to come where they can be confident, where they can feel relaxed, where they get excellent care. We've talked about social distancing. Mm -hmm. Let's not have medical distancing. Mm. Just because we're dealing with COVID doesn't mean you shouldn't come to the ER if you're not feeling well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about trivial illnesses. We're talking about chest pain or injuries, the kinds of illnesses that would normally take people to the emergency department. We're equipped to take care of you in a safe, quick manner. We want the people of Hawaii to know, and we especially want the people of Maui to know, that we're part of Maui Strong and Maui Proud, and that it's our privilege to take care of the people uh, of this island and our surrounding islands, and we devote ourselves to it. Well, we do the same, too, and we come alongside you guys there at Maui Health. Dr. Lee, I want to thank you for your time and your uh, uh, expertise in all of these questions. Some of these questions are not easy to uh, answer, but I think you did a good job. So, Dr. Lee, thank you again. Any last words? I'm always there for you. Call on me. I'll always be there. Awesome. Sounds like us, too, here at KPOA. Thank you, Dr. Weiss. Yep. We'll talk again. Thank you. Bye. Aloha. KPOA 93.5. Love talking to Dr. Lee. 93.5. KPOA.